is one at more than 100 miles an hour. In early summer, cricket is in full swing. An entirely English game, you may think, till you remember that the Australians, playing here at Lord's Ground in London, the home of cricket, excel at it, as do New Zealanders, South Africans, West Indians, Indians and Pakistanis. What epic struggles there have been between the test match teams over the last 70 years. When the sun beats down, you need a hat. And where will you see better hats than at Royal Ascot in June? We said the derby is unique. So, in a different way, is Ascot, with every woman striving to look her prettiest and be in the height of fashion. The drive along the course of the Queen and other members of the royal family is part of the Ascot tradition. As for the racing, this beautiful course near Windsor provides a feast of it on each day of the meeting. Ascot Stakes, the Gold Cup, and all the other big events. Those big purses of Ascot attract huge fields. And here's a typical dash to the post, with the horses formed into two groups. Bobby Elliott takes small slam to the front to win the Royal Hunt Cup. Wimbledon, the name that means tennis all over the world. The stars rise and wane. This is the Christine Truman Angela Mortimer final, but the fame of Wimbledon is undiminished. It even seems to have its own weather, but a fine fortnight is almost a Wimbledon tradition. Australia's Fred Stolle playing Chuck McKinley of America in the final. A fine match. To win the singles title at Wimbledon is the greatest honour in tennis. Another place of international renown, Henley. This stretch of the Thames is crowded during that glorious July week of the Royal Regatta. Not only competitors, everybody's afloat. And once a rowing man, always a rowing man. Here's a veteran excitedly watching the Diamond Skulls, won by Stuart McKenzie. It's grand to get on the river where skill and muscle, not something with mechanical horsepower, win truly rewarding victory. Never making popular headlines, but extensively played throughout Britain, is the delightful game of bowls. Watch this match for a few seconds, and you'll see that it's very much a game of skill. The wood, as they call the ball, is weighted off center, biased, to use the proper term, In throwing his wood, the player allows for the fact that it can't run straight. The bowling green also is biased, sloping towards the edges. Try the game sometime and you'll quickly see where the skill comes in. Keen players can't resist trying to influence the wood after they've bowled it, by a sort of telepathy apparently. Let's look at a smaller ball, here at St Andrews, Scotland. Headquarters of the game, mecca of worshippers at the Shrine of Golf. In tones of awe, they speak of the old course at St Andrews. But the British Open Championship goes the rounds of many courses. Here, it's being contested at Birkdale. The cachet of the British Open title is prized by golfers everywhere, apart from the shower of money that indirectly goes with it. That big-hearted little golfer, Di Reese, has been called the finest player who's never won the British Open. Motor racing in Britain grows more and more popular every year. This is the British Grand Prix 1963. It's raced at Silverstone, near Northampton. This time, 115,000 enthusiasts crowd the track. Grand Prix races are now run in England every summer. A tremendous test for both cars and drivers. This race has 82 laps, 246 miles in all. It's won by a Scot, 
the man who goes on to be the world champion driver, Jim Clark. Speed is relative. In sailing, there's a thrill in just making a few knots. And nowhere does sailing so completely dominate the scene as at Cowes on the Isle of Wight, about 100 miles southwest of London. In the first week of August, Cowes Week, the Royal Yacht is seen here. Prince Philip is here sailing Blue Bottle with Uffa Fox, his friend and doyen of yachtsmen. Of every sport, enthusiasts claim that theirs is the finest, and yachtsmen are no exception. How true that much-quoted saying, there's nothing, absolutely nothing, half so well worth doing as just messing about in boats. Provided, of course, that messing about includes sailing. Fishing isn't always a solitary pursuit. These fellows hold their angling contest where the weight caught determines the winner. Another illustration of the fact that because of the temperate climate, there's something to be done out of doors in Britain all the year round, which is no doubt the reason why Britain is known as the home of sport. September sees that splendid occasion in the Highlands of Scotland, the Royal Braemar Gathering. Real He-Man stuff is Highland wrestling, like most of the competitions at the Braemar Gathering. Tossing the cable. Easy. Try it sometime. October now, when show jumping fever grips the public fancy to an extent no one would have predicted a few years ago. Here's David Barker riding a clear round on Mr. Softy in the Horse of the Year show well earning the applause at the crowded Empire Pool, Wembley. The bookie, in the only way that matters to him, is Monica Wall he surveys at Aintree Liverpool on Grand National Day. It's early spring now, and Britain's best steeplechasers are pitted against the world's most formidable course. They had to go round it twice, covering four and a quarter miles and 30 jumps. Obstacles such as exist only at Aintree. The names of these jumps are household words. Beecher's Brook, the chair, the water, the canal turn. Terrific tests for any horse, especially for those in the top weight class, carrying up to 168 pounds. See how that champion rider, Fred Winter, won on Kilmore. Something the whole country talks about. The boat race, held on the Thames only a few miles above Westminster. Oxford and Cambridge have rowed against each other more than a hundred times. That's Princess Margaret and her husband, the Earl of Snow. He once coxed the Cambridge crew. From Putney to Mortlake, the course is four and a quarter miles. Same length as the Grand National, but no jumps. And on this day, millions in England are heatedly partisan. Oxford or Cambridge, dark blue or light. It's still early spring on that big day of rugby union football. England and Scotland play at Wickenham near London every other year. They meet alternately here and in Edinburgh. Old rivals, England and Scotland, no quarter asked, or given. 